Hi, and welcome to the Bouncing Act Jacksonville Edition. I'm Monta Williams. We're bringing you community stories and introducing you to businesses and people who are making a difference. So let's see who's making a difference right here in your neighborhood. On this episode of the Balancing Act, tips on helping prevent and overcome addiction from our friends at Drug Free Duval. Parents of strong-willed or what the experts call oppositionally defiant children can make home life stressful. Parent Help Center has a solution. Watch as Friends of James Weldon Johnson Park is on a mission to transform the urban space into one that engages diverse communities and restores vitality to the city's public square. Plus, lots more today on The Balancing Act. The hard work nonprofits put in to change lives is remarkable. Take a look at this. Helping others prevent and recover from an addiction is a journey and not necessarily an easy one. Drug Free Duval works hard to support those going through the process. They're also helping prevent the stigma that can come with it. Drug Free Duval is a substance abuse prevention coalition and our, our goal, our passion, our aim is to create an environment in which people can make healthy choices. and. So often the uh, environment around our lives is unhealthy in subtle and un unseen ways. So we try to rip the uh, cover off what might be um, not the best opportunity and work with the community to say, what do we really want our lives to look like and how can we support changes in the environment that can help you make the healthy choice the easy choice. Susan and her team are committed to changing the narrative around addiction and prevention. The narrative is getting more friendly. We're beginning to recognize that, you know, we used to sort of say people are addicts and the, there was a whole moral concept behind that. They have chosen to do this thing. They can stop if they feel like it. They just want to get high. I can tell you right now in having worked with um, folks that, have, that are suffering from opioid use disorder so closely, they don't want to be an addict. They do not want to be a person with substance use disorder. The withdrawal is horrific. The withdrawal from opioid use disorder from, from what some of our um, amazing people have explained to us is worse than the worst kind of flu you can imagine. They describe things like feeling like a sheet is just breaking their skin, heavy, hurting, painful on every joint, um, being overly thirsty and not being able to sleep and really wanting to die. So at that point, if that, that person who really does want to quit being an addict, um, if they don't have the opportunity to have treatment and help and support, but they do have the opportunity to use again, they might use again. It's not to get high. It's to not die. Creating safe spaces within the workplace and the community can really help optimize a person's behavioral health. Most of us spend more of our waking hours in our jobs or on our jobs than we do in our homes, etc. So I know it's not that we believe employers are responsible for their employees' behavioral health, but they have the opportunity to create an amazing environment that will support their employees. And we have all kinds of training and a toolkit and everything to help these employers figure that out. So please get in touch with us. The organization is part of a task force that provides education on issues surrounding drug abuse. We are together in, in, in small groups and big groups and collectively even our city council. A couple weeks ago, we had the pleasure of training all 19 of our city council members on one of our trainings. And, you know, I mean, five years ago, they never would have considered such a thing, but we're raising the awareness opening the conversation. People are, are approaching things with empathy and creativity in terms of figuring out ways to solve problems. And I think we're all considering the possibility now. And I would say that's the greatest impact we've had. Empathy and compassion are essential when helping others overcome their addiction. We love volunteers and we love people that are willing to learn to help us educate, to help us train, to help us do environmental scans and festival scans and all this crazy stuff that might not make any sense to you right now, go to our website, 
www.drugfreedubal.org and you can see our list of initiatives and you can email us at info at drugfreeduval or susan at drugfreeduval.org. Either one doesn't matter. Um, and we will love to get you plugged in. We always need people to help us with audio visual and creating uh, PowerPoints and presentations and trainings. We're currently working on really upping the stigma training and would love engagement there. So we'd love to have you get engaged with us. For more information about how you can become involved, visit drugfreeduval.org or go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Our next story really shows the difference giving back can make. Being the parent of a child who is what the experts call oppositionally defiant or strong-willed can make home life far from peaceful, but it doesn't have to be this way. Let's watch. The Parent Help Center is an amazing organization that helps desperate parents do something we all want, and that's to put peace in our home. Well, one of the problems that we're having in the home today is oppositional defiant children. They do not respect, nor do they understand that there's consequences for every decision in life. Total disrespect, no anger management skills, no work ethic. These are the behaviors that we focus on trying to help a parent become the parent of a strong-willed child. And sadly, when the parents come to us, these children, strong-willed, defiant children, have knocked holes in their walls, have destroyed their home, have broken the heart of the one who loves them with all their heart. It's a sad situation when you have to live with a kid that you're afraid of. The parent that comes to us has reached a point of stating, I cannot live this way anymore, and they're willing to do whatever it takes. That's where the three-legged stool comes in. The first leg is the Empowered Parent Conference where we teach parents what to do. The second leg is our weekend success camp where we show them how to do what we taught them in the classroom. And the third leg is our weekly parent support. When we have those three components, we're gonna produce a happy ham. Why is this important? We have a problem in America with young people getting incarcerated. 66% that get incarcerated within 24 months will be back in jail. But worse than that, 49% will be back in jail within 12 months. Our whole focus is trying to keep these kids from getting into a system that's not gonna fix them, it's probably make it worse. The success camp is unbelievable. Why is that, Mr. Glenn? It's very simple. It's the only camp I know of where parents have to go with their kid. That is a wake-up call for the kid and for mom and dad. The camp is designed to fix the cause, not the children. It provides support and solutions for a successful parenting plan. And so we bring both parent and child on site uh, so we can work with the system. We have, uh, we use Murray Bowen's family systems theory approach to um, to, to look at it from a systems perspective, uh, which says that it is an emotional uh, group. That's what the family is, an emotional group uh, entity together. And you gotta figure out what the cause of the problem is and you gotta deal with that. And we do so at our camp. Then once the parents get there, uh, we bring them all in. We have other parents who have gone through our program um, um, to help them with that process, to let them know and reassure the new parents that everything will be fine and that um, you're gonna be okay. And we give them our rules for the camp that weekend. That's how long it lasts from Friday through Sunday. Children can't be controlled, only influenced. It's a non-confrontational lifestyle, not just a program. What we do is, is, deter is, is, is about changing parents and changing the whole uh, perspective of the home environment. Um, and it can be long-term if the parents do what we say. And we first thing we teach them is that you can't Im you can't control a child, but you can influence them by your behavior. Our motto is change parents will see change kids. Support. It's unbelievable how important that is because we can give you the books, we can give you the training, but somebody's got to encourage you because this is tough dealing with a strong-willed kid. We know for a fact that if we have clear boundaries and clear consequences and the parents are consistent with love and affection and positive strokes, we will see a kid that we wanna see, not the one that we have to live with that's out of control, disobedient, and disrespectful. 
The end result for parents who follow the plan? A change in their child's behavior, the ability to set them up for success in future relationships, and restoration of family peace. When that phone rings, I can almost guarantee you it's a mother calling. And I've listened to many tears over the 20 years we've done this. What they need clearly is hope. We offer hope, we offer encouragement, and we offer determination to help you put peace back in your home. I would advise any parent, if you're having these issues, uh, seek us out. We're there and we'll be more than glad to help you and assist you in any way we can and support you all the way through until we see changed behavior. For more information, visit theparenthelpcenter.com or just go to our website, thebalancingact.com. It's always great to see communities coming together. Check this out. Thanks to the hard work and dedication of many, James Weldon Johnson Park has been transformed into a modern urban space that engages diverse communities and restores vitality to our city's public square. Welcome to the park. We are right here in downtown Jacksonville in the heart of the city. We are the oldest park in Jacksonville. 155 years old this year. It is the center of town where people come to gather, exchange ideas, have a nice bite to eat, listen to some good music, experience a festival, play in our kids zone, and see their friends. Going back to the earliest history of Jacksonville, this was the cultural center of the city. And at first, it was known just simply as City Park. Then later, it became known as the St. James Park. In 1898, it was named Hemming Park. In 1978, the park was redesigned as a plaza, and it was frankly not a very inviting place. There were loiterers, there was trash, and the landscaping that remained was not very attractive, so it became a downtrodden place in the city. In 2014, the city realized that in order to achieve downtown revitalization, this park had to be fixed up. And so they hired a nonprofit organization called Friends of Hemming Park, which took over the security, the landscaping, the programming, which made the park revitalized again. In 2020, the park was renamed James Weldon Johnson Park. Johnson was perhaps Jacksonville's most internationally famous citizen. He was an educator, a civil rights leader, an attorney, uh, a composer, and an all about Renaissance man, and one of the people that this city is most proud of. Friends of James Weldon Johnson Park are proud to showcase all the amazing and entertaining activities there are to do. When Friends of James Weldon Johnson Park took over the park in 2014, one of the things that we wanted to do is really activate the park and really make it a space for people to come and enjoy themselves. And we do that every day at lunchtime with live music and our food trucks that happen every single day. We have festivals that take place on the weekends. A lot of the festivals that we produce are cultural festivals. We have Viva La Fiesta that happens during Hispanic Heritage Month, a Duval Legacies series that happens in Black History Month. Upcoming, we've got Cajun Fest. We have Bluegrass Beer and Barbecue Festival, which is very, very popular with local bluegrass bands and local barbecue vendors. And we have a ton of fun. Friends of James Weldon Johnson Park is centrally located with City Hall right within walking distance. We see council members, we see the mayor, so it's very exciting to see our community leaders here enjoying themselves and that also gives ourselves a sense of pride that, you know, we're a destination for really the leaders of Jacksonville. I moved to Jacksonville about 10 years ago and when I first moved here I naturally came to the center of town to see what was going on. The park as it was known as Hemming Park at the time uh, there really wasn't much going on sadly and they established Friends of Hemming Park at the time which has now become Friends of James Weldon Johnson Park and they've done wonders. I mean you can see from you know behind me they've, they've managed to change the landscaping. It's so much more colorful. They've programmed the park. There's fun events that now I come to often and help with as well. So it's, it's provided me with a sense of community. We've even managed to get young sculptors from UNF to actually have design competitions to put sculptures in the park. And I really, really think that James Weldon Johnson Park is starting to bring this city together and it's becoming the cultural and, and public you know, part of the city, as it should be. Friends of James Weldon Johnson Park has worked hard to make this park a safe gathering space for the entire community. 
looking back from where we started in 2014 to where we are today has been a huge transformation and I'm so proud of my team that works every day tirelessly on making sure that the park is beautiful and welcoming for all people and also for the city for supporting our vision and making sure that downtown and our park is a beautiful cultural center hub. It is once again the vital heart of the city of Jacksonville. Get outdoors and enjoy all that Friends of James Weldon Johnson Park has to offer. For more information, visit their website, jamesweldonjohnsonpark.org, or go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Millions of Americans, both men and women, suffer from hair loss by the age of 50. And I know this, 85% of men and some women have experienced thinning hair or hair loss, according to the American Hair Loss Association. Genetics, disease, stress, environment, that all plays a factor. And hair loss can be absolutely devastating for self-image and emotional well-being. Here to talk about the daily struggle and offer help Yes, there is help, is Darian Braun, founder of Accelerate 35. Welcome, Darian. Hi, thank you for having me. I love talking about this because I think everyone out there, most everyone can relate to this. Yep. There's, uh, there's physical challenges, emotional, spiritual, when it comes to the hair loss. What inspired you to take this journey to help? Well, I got asked by a woman who was sick for help and she had lost her hair. Mm. And she it was her crown and it was her confidence and come to find it's a common story around the globe. It is. I've got hundreds of thousands of stories right now of people just saying thank you because they had no hope. They've tried all the pills and potions and lotions and all the snake oils. And it's hard being in this industry and saying, I can actually grow your hair. Nobody buys it. No. I know. So what did you do next to help? I went and locked myself in the lab for three years, 79,000 79, man hours. Wow. 15,546 formulation changes. And mostly nothing worked for the first year. Millions were spent. I found the American Indians. So I went up to South Dakota, went to the reservation. That's interesting. And I was supposed to stay for a few days. I ended up living there for a little bit. And sure enough, the herbs and florals helped close the cuticle. And that was part of the puzzle. And then it started falling into place. And it's called? Accelerate 35. 35, I believe, is because of the 35 ingredients inside? Exactly. Tell me how that works, what they are. They are a racing engine for growing hair, and it's the fastest thing on the planet. Our competition out on the market, any one of our comp competitors will tell you that you will see some form of hair growth in four months. Wow, four months? Yeah, so I had to go do clinical trials, and they, had, they made me do it twice because they didn't believe it. And it worked? 268% increase in 14 days, 53% increase in length in, 50, in 45 days. That turns out to men thinning hair no more. Women wanting hair extensions, no more. All right, so let's talk about how it works. You have, and I see behind uh, our big screen there, yes. a shampoo, conditioner, and serum. Now, Just the serum's in each one of the, in, in, in everything. Okay. So you're always using the serum. It's in the shampoo, it's in the conditioner, and it's on its own. But how do you want someone to use this? First, a shampoo? Well, wash your hair okay. twice, get it clean, rinse it out, put some conditioner in if you want, and then when your hair is wet, spray on the serum as much as you can. Saturate your head, scrub it into your scalp, comb it through root to tip, dry as normal. For our viewers who'd like more information, where can they go? GetX35.com. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming oh, in. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'm going to grow your hair and I'll be back in 90 days. I'm going to hold you to it. I'll see you in 90 days. Be wait a minute. What do I get out of this? You get a thank you. Okay, I'll do it. And if I don't get hair, I get a refund. You'll have hair. <laughs> if you'd like more information, go to our website, TheBalancingAct.com. You may not think about your digestive system when you think about your overall well-being, but that's where good health and proper nutrition begins. The human digestive system has over 500 types of bacteria, most of which are good and keep you healthy. A healthy person generally has more good than bad bacteria, but any change in the body's bacteria balance can cause digestive issues. So today, we're learning more about gut health and how we can help maintain its regularity. Joining us virtually is Rudy Lara, branch manager of Yakult USA. Hi, Rudy. Good morning, thank you for having me. Oh, no, thanks for being here. All right, so going with your gut is more than just an expression. Let's be honest. It provides, I believe, the foundation of good health, and that's what we hear from doctors too, correct? 
That's right. We believe that maintaining good overall health begins in the gut. The gut is commonly referred to as our body's second brain, but we must treat it as such. The goal is to maintain a well-balanced digestive system. But there are many factors that can disrupt the balance in our intestinal microbiota, such as our overall diet. Eating poorly can prevent us from getting the nutrients we need. There's stress. Our emotions can affect our gut health, but our gut health can also affect our emotions. Other factors are fatigue, aging, bacterial contamination, and medicine, like antibiotics, radiation, and chemotherapy. So we want more of the beneficial bacteria so they can compete against the harmful bacteria for nutrients and attachment sites in our gut. A healthy gut is important for long-term health. It was the belief of the cult founder, microbiologist, Dr. Minoru Shirola, that a healthy intestinal tract leads to a long life. Now I'm looking at this cute little bottle, Yakult. It says here, non-fat probiotic drink. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've never heard of Yakult. Well, although it might seem like probiotics are relatively new, Yakult has a solid 85 years of history. It was originally created in Japan in 1935 by, as I mentioned, Dr. Shirota. Yakult has a vast international presence, including two microbiology research centers, one in Tokyo and one in Belgium. Many people in the U.S. already know Yakult from abroad. This is common since Yakult is now available in 40 countries and regions around the world. Yakult probiotic drink is made with fermented dairy and contains billions of live and active probiotic cultures of the Lactobacillus casei shirota strain. This strain is named after Yakult company founder and is what makes Yakult unique and special. Now, why do people tend to confuse yogurt drinks with probiotic drinks? Well, it could be because probiotic drinks are often found in supermarkets next to yogurt drinks, but the difference is much more than taste and texture. To truly understand their differences, let's begin with going over what a probiotic is. So according to the World Health Organization, probiotics are live microorganisms when administered in adequate amounts confer a health benefit to the host. But basically, they are friendly bacteria that can help correct imbalances in our digestive system. Yakult probiotic drinks also differ in their size. They're packaged into these small 2.7 ounce bottles. This makes them easy for everyone to take, kids, adults, and the elderly. With that said, Olga, are you ready to try some Yakult? You actually read my mind. I'm actually peeling off the top because I wanted to try the taste, which is very important for me. So as I try it, um, tell me how often should I have Yakult? Everyone's body is different and reacts in different ways. We suggest drinking one to two bottles per day. The reason to consume with regularity is to replenish your gut with live and active probiotic cultures. This is really good. I actually like this a lot. So for our viewers, Rudy, who'd like more information, where can they go? So Yukult is now available nationwide. You can find out more at yukultusa.com and use our store locator to find Yukult in the grocery store near you, such as Publix and Walmart. And it's produced in our state-of-the-art factory in Fountain Valley, California. Okay, Rudy, so let's do one cheers before we say goodbye to good gut health. Cheers. Salud. Oh, really good. Great stuff. Rudy, thank you so much for all the information. I appreciate it. You take care. Have a great day. Thanks. And if you'd like more information on Yakult, just check out our website, thebalancingact.com. It's one of our most important senses, yet for many people, being able to hear can be a struggle. According to the National Institute of Deafness and Other Communication Disorders, nearly 30 million adults in the United States, 30 million, could benefit from wearing hearing aids. I'm one of them. New research has now associated untreated hearing loss with other very serious health conditions, including cognitive decline and dementia. Here to help us today with what we need to know is Dr. Shannon Basham from Phonak and hearing aid wearer Liz Fox, who's come to realize the importance of having the right hearing aids. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Look, Shannon, before we hear Liz's story, you know, I'd like to touch on a couple of statistics and, you know, let's talk about how very critical hearing is to our overall well being. Generally speaking, people tend to put a lesser value on their hearing health as they do for, say, their vision, which is unfortunate because hearing health is critically linked to a person's social emotional, cognitive, and physical well-being. Hearing loss is actually associated with a higher incidence of heart disease, diabetes, and even depression. The Lancet Commission concluded that hearing loss is the number one modifiable risk factor for dementia, which means that 
treating hearing loss could actually slow the rate of cognitive decline as we age. People who treat their hearing loss are more likely to engage socially and connect well with others. So it's very important that we look at the overall general health of people when we consider hearing loss and treating hearing loss. Liz, I was reading here that you're a retired graphic designer from Tampa, Florida. Would you mind sharing your personal story um, with regards to your hearing loss? My hearing loss was gradual, but about seven years ago, I knew I needed help. Uh, I was always asking people to repeat themselves. I pretended to understand conversations. It was exhausting. I missed out so much. I felt embarrassed and dumb and started withdrawing socially. It was a very difficult time until I got help. Which type of hearing aid did you use? Where did you find, uh, you know, some help? I have the Phonak Audeo Paradise, and it is amazing. Everything I hope for. Sound quality is richer. They sound more natural. Background sound is reduced. And there are just so many new features that make my life easier. I have multiple connections to my computer and iPhone with Bluetooth. I can stream virtually anything from both the computer or the iPhone, and uh, the sound comes directly into my hearing aids. I love being able to have conversations while I'm streaming. My favorite is tap control. I can answer the phone or activate Siri just by tapping on my ear. That's amazing. And I was looking here. I mean, first of all, Montel, look how tiny they are. I know. Check this out. That's incredible. They're so, I mean, I can't even tell you're wearing one, Liz. I mean, this sounds like it's really helped you. And could I even say changed your life? Oh, definitely. It was definitely life changing. Shannon, it sounds like the Audeo Paradise is really a great choice. And that's really your mission, right? To provide products for all ages and needs? Absolutely. Phonak has been providing hearing solutions for the industry for over 70 years. We were the first to provide universal connectivity through Bluetooth and truly hands-free telephone calls. And we not only provide Audeo Paradise, but we provide custom hearing aids at all different sizes from the ear level that look like earbuds to the tiny little hearing aids that reside deeply in the ear canal that are truly invisible when in place. We have hearing solutions for every degree of hearing loss, regardless of age and lifestyle or even cosmetic preference. And if people want to get more information, where do they go? Our website at phonac.com. Thank you for what you do. Just great stuff and, and really change the way people will ever, ever hear again. And be happy like Liz. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, of course, if you want more information, you can always go to our website, thebalancingact.com, and check it out, okay? Thanks so much for joining us on this local edition of The Bouncing Act. We'll see you next time.